Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We just wrapped up uh, a series on jerk baits. Well, a couple of videos on jerk baits. We did that winter jerk bait video, then that insane underwater video. If you guys missed that, down in the video description, I'm going to give you links directly to those videos so that you guys can check that out because that, that underwater footage was insane. Hopefully you didn't miss that. But if you did, in that video, we made mention to some soft jerkbait footage, some insane underwater soft jerkbait stuff. We're going to include a little bit of that in this video. What we're going to talk about today is rigging soft jerkbaits uh, and then give you, again, a little bit of that underwater footage. The reason we're doing this video now, why talking about soft jerk baits in January? Well, quite frankly, when we show you that footage, you're going to see some, we'll call it strange rigging, uh, a way of throwing a fluke or a soft jerk bait that you probably haven't seen before, so it needed an explanation. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to start off with some basic rigging, the standard rigging, then I'm going to show you that unique rigging. And we're going to give you a little bit of that underwater footage as well. So stick around. Make sure you see it. Let's jump into this. Uh, right off the bat, the two jerk baits that we throw the most when we're going soft jerk bait, it's going to be the Zoom Super Fluke and either the standard uh, Super Fluke or in the Magnum size. The other one would be a Strike King Caffeine Shad. Throw that one quite a bit as well. It's got a little bit more weight to it. It's a little bit faster sink rate for me. Uh, and I like that at times. So right off the bat, standard rigging. My hook of choice for a soft jerk bait, or for a, a standard, we'll just say a super fluke, is going to be a, an EWG 4 aught hook. Now, if I'm fishing this bait quickly up on the surface, like half in the water, half out the water, like we've talked in videos in the past, I'm going to use a standard wire. This is actually the super line. This is when I want to fish that bait just below the surface, and I still want to be really aggressive, really reactive. I go with that super line. All you do is you put it in the nose of the fluke, drop it down, oh, quarter inch, maybe a little more, pop it out the side, standard text pose rig. Poke through the belly, and then just barely skin hook. And that's it. That's the standard way that we fish a fluke. But really, that's not what this video is about. What today's video is about is a different way of doing it. Something that Tim and I have experimented with, and we really like it. Uh, I'm, there are other people doing this. You know, I just personally don't see other people doing it, but I know that there are. It's not that crazy. So what we do, we take owner CPS rings. If you're familiar with these little guys, basically a, a little screw lock, okay? What we do is they come in a couple different sizes. For a standard fluke or a caffeine shad or a normal like four to five inch fluke, we use the medium. For the bigger baits, the magnums, we use the large. But what we do is I take that fluke and I screw that screw lock. I'll just stick it in there to show you it to start. I just screw that screw lock into the nose of that bait. All the way down till it's virtually flush. You can just barely see it in there. And then what I do is I take, a, now this is a Gamakatsu, this is a finesse wide gap hook. And that's only a one aught hook. And I just nose hook right through that ring. That's it. I mean, this is practically a banjo minnow. Not kidding. I mean, that's really what this rigging is. And then I can even, once I've done that, if I want, I can tighten it up even one more so that my hook is just right in the face of that bait. What that's allowing me to do is throw a regular size fluke with a very small hook, but I keep great exposure. Now why does this matter, right? What's the point? The point is when you're throwing soft jerk baits as a whole, we're all using these big hooks. 
heavy line. We hit those fish hard. And really, you have pretty darn good hookup ratios, honestly. At least in my experience, it's been very high. Tim and I both are very successful with soft jerk baits. But the first day that we tried this, we learned something. And that's what this underwater footage is about. What we learned is that these bass, like 99% of the time, headshot the soft jerk bait. That's it. Right on the head. That's all they eat. Why does that matter? Well, here's the deal. If you take a regular rigged fluke and a bass comes up and eats that, they headshot it, meaning it goes down head first. And you saw this in the hard jerk bait video as well. Almost every single time they ate the head of that pointer. Same thing with the soft bait, but with the soft bait, it's easier to take it all the way in. So they take that bait down head first and they shut their mouth. Now, what do you see that's wrong? When I set the hook, we've got to reverse this entire thing in the mouth, then catch that hook point on our way out. That's a little bit complicated. We're using a big hook, heavy wire hook, heavy line, so that we can really jack those fish. Really, we're overcompensating in order to bury that hook. Now, because we do that, the hookup ratio is still quite high. It works extremely well. But what we found the first day that we did this is that they would headshot that bait. Boom, they'd eat it. Now, you see, as soon as I hit that, what's happening to that hook? It turns around. So by the time they get this thing down, that hook is facing the right way. And the second you pull it all, it sticks. I don't know if, that, if that's registering with you how important that is. What I'm really saying is that when I rig them this way, I hook my fish in the lips. When I rig them this way, I stick them in the back roof of the mouth every single time. I had no idea that that was going to happen. Uh, we were just experimenting with something different, just trying different things, seeing what else worked. When we started doing this, we had no idea that we were going to hook those fish so well. Now, the, the true benefit, once you realize that, that you're hooking them so well, is that you're doing it with a little tiny hook. And that finesse wide gap hook, even though it's small, it's strong. So I really don't worry about bend outs at all but I'm able to do it with lighter line. So if you're in a situation where your fish are getting line shy, especially when you're trying to throw like a seven inch bait, if, when I throw this guy, I'm typically throwing minimum of 15 pound, but oftentimes 20 or even more in and around cover. When I throw this way, 15 is my maximum. 12 to 15, no problem. This little guy where I'm running it with a one on 10 pound, 12 pound. And honestly, I could probably set it with six or eight, no problem. Uh, it allows you to catch those fish that are a little more finicky because you have overall, you have less hook showing and you have way lighter line and you still get a great hook set in a better position with a smaller hook where those fish have a really hard time throwing it. Makes a huge, huge difference. From an action standpoint, virtually identical. Now, one nice thing about this rig is that if you want to fish deeper, you still have room in the whole middle section of the body to stick in nail weight. You can add nail weight to it to get that bait either to fall nose first or to fall relatively flat. You can fish a lot deeper without having that nail interfering with your hookup ratio, which is another huge benefit. I hope that helps you guys. I mean, this is a very different way of fluke fishing. Like I said, I'm sure we're not the first people to do it. I mean, my gosh, banjo minnows are rigged this way. Somebody thought of it. But I never see anybody doing it. And since we started, the hookup has been awesome. Uh, I hope you guys watch those underwater clips. You see the way that those fish just fully engulf every time. And then they end up hooked deep. Just pegs them every time. And then because it is a smaller hook, you just reach in there, pop that hook out, no issues at all. It's a phenomenal system. You guys have got to try it. Just a very different approach to a bait that we all throw 
and it works extremely well. It's also because you're going to a lighter bit, uh, excuse me, to a lighter hook and to a lighter line, you can go to a lighter rod as well. So down in the video description, like I said, Tim and I are going to include links to all these different products, sizes of hooks, the sizes of the rings. We'll even give you color recommendations, rods for if you're fishing them traditionally versus the finesse route. We'll include all that down there so you don't have to go searching around on the internet trying to find it. But I hope that this benefits you guys. You know, soft jerk baits, it may or may not be a wintertime thing for you, but this is information that you need to have while you're sitting at home this winter planning for the spring and the summer of what you're going to do with your fishing. This is a method that you need to get prepared for and be throwing this year. And then give us some feedback. Let us know how it works for you. We look forward to interacting with you down here in the comments, on the website, on our other social media avenues. We appreciate your guys' support so much. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.